Hallelujah. God bless everybody. God bless everybody. Hallelujah. So I had to redo this prophetic word that was given last night. This is a part number two of March Milestone. So I'm going to redo this because uh, it got it got deleted last night. So I have to redo this. But I've been praying and I believe the Lord also has more things to say for this March Milestones prophetic word. This is actually the second part. If you haven't watched the first part, I want you to go back and watch the first part of the March prophetic word, which is March Milestones. Um, and last night I tried to record the second part, but it got deleted. So the Lord told me to go ahead and do it over today. So Father, right now I just thank you for this March, the second part of the March prophetic word. Hallelujah. This download of this revelation that you've given me for the body of Christ. March milestones. Uh, this is the second part of that father and i thank you today i ask your glory the heavens be opened above and your glory will uh, uh, descend upon this line today god i yield myself as your prophet today speak to your people today god i pray in jesus name we just pray god that you'll draw the people that need to hear this prophetic word and that you'll re re relent begin to release keys to the body of christ um, for March. Um, so this is the second part. Like I said, we tried to record it last night and something happened and it got deleted. But I believe that was because God wanted some people on here today. Sometimes I do it at nighttime and not as many people get to listen to it. So I'm going to go ahead and release the second part of the March Milestones prophetic word. If you, did, if you didn't hear the first part, I want you to go back and, 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 um, uh, you know, re-listen to the first part of the March Milestones prophetic word. So th this is the month of March, which is the month of milestones in the body of Christ. The first uh, part was milestones of greatness, change, breakthrough, trial, and victory. And the second part is going to be, hallelujah, what God has released to me. This, and you got to go back and listen to that, but the second part uh, is going to be March Milestones and Mysteries, okay? Mysteries, uh, milestones of faith, transformation, and crossover. And I have all the notes written up, so you might want to take some notes. Uh, it is also going to be the March milestones of Passover, meaning we're prep preparate, we're in preparation for the Passover season and the Resurrection Sunday that is coming March 27th to April 4th. And uh, Resurrection Sunday is coming, so we're in the Feast of Purim and the Feast of Passover right now. We're also in the Jewish month of Adar and the month of Nisan, which are very prophetic times okay so let's understand these uh these times and these seasons that we're coming into because god's going to march us over and there's going to be certain marching orders that are going to be released to the body of christ uh in this season that were not released in other seasons hallelujah and so when we uh i also want to um, finish this off and then i'll begin to to break this down. So March milestones of Passover, uh, rolling away of Gilgal of the flesh and the circumcision of the heart. So a uh, different milestones, we're going to talk about Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, Jordan, different milestones that the children of Israel came to. We're going to talk about the crossover. This is the month milestone of crossover. We're going to see that in Joshua chapter three, four, and five, that uh, God commanded the priests uh, to take 12 stones, one from each tribe of Israel. And as they crossed over the Jordan, this is a representation of us as a body of Christ crossing over out of the wilderness into the land of promise, into Canaan land. So crossing over from lack and poverty into prosperity, from, from, from trial into victory, you know, um, from poverty to prosperity so we're going to cross over into canaan land in the month of march but the lord said i'm not going to leave people behind meaning the whole body of christ is going to pass over together notice we'll get into this story in a minute in joshua 3 4 and 5 but notice god had the ark of the covenant go first then he had the priests, which would stand in the new covenant for the apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers them going before and then the rest of of the children of israel passed over or crossed over the Jordan. Okay, so the month of of, of uh, uh, Passover, really, what we're going to talk about is this is a Jewish month of of Nisan. Adar is half the month. Adar and half is Nisan, and they're also in the Feast of Purim. Okay, so um, Nisan is the month where the Jews exiled and left Egypt. So Egypt. 
uh, prophetically stands for bondage. That means that it's a month that the body of Christ is going to come out of bondage. That certain bondages uh, that you've had, you're going to cross over in this month. You're going to come through the bondage. You're going to come out of Egypt. You're going to get Egypt out of you. And you're going to begin to cross over into your promised land, into greatness. Uh, as we saw the first milestone prophetic word, the first part was uh, uh, milestones of greatness, right? Milestones of breakthrough, change. Because there's always change when you go into greatness. Okay, when you cross over from one season to the next, uh, as we're crossing over into Passover season right now in the Feast of Purim, we're going to always have to go through milestones of change and then transformation. That's why the second part is milestones of transformation, faith. And it's always going to take faith and crossing over, okay? When we saw the first one was milestones of greatness, and we're going to talk about greatness because you're walking out of your bondage of, of preparation because Purim is a season of preparation for Passover, but it is prophetically a season of preparation for many people in the body of Christ and in the prophetic ministry that have been preparing, but now you're going to walk into your full calling and your greatness in, in this season, okay, a Passover, meaning you're going to pass over, okay, so you're going to cut cross over, but we're, we see crossover a couple times in the Bible, but I'm going to get to that in a minute, so Nisan is the month that they, the Jews exiled and left Egypt, so it is the month that Egypt is bondage, everything left in the world, or the world is bondage, right, Egypt, okay, and then it's also the month of Adar, which is prophetically stands for strength and power, and your strength will increase, I prophesy, because it is the month of Adar, and it is also the spring season, meaning you will spring forth. The Lord is saying in, 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 in March is a spring season, meaning God's going to catapult you, pull you back, and spring you forward. Prophetic acceleration, I prophesy. Uh, and things are going to begin to spring up. That certain things that you have planted even years ago, back from eight, ten years ago, God said it's going to begin to harvest. This is also a harvest season, and it's a season of restoration. And I'll get into that in the, in the end, where God is going to restore a sevenfold blessing for everything that the enemy stole. Proverbs 6 30 31 when the enemy's been caught he has to restore a sevenfold and God said this is a season that the enemy has been caught hallelujah that the enemy has come in like a flood Isaiah 50 59 19 but God is going to raise up a standard against him and I'm going to get into that towards the end but I want to break this word down because there's a lot of prophetic uh, types and shadows that you really got to catch in the realm of the spirit so God, I thank you right now for this word. Uh, and so let's finish this. So it is going to be the month of rolling away. God has to, the word Gilgal, and I'll get to it in a minute, where they camped at Gilgal. And then you see the same things with the sons of the prophets. You see Elijah and Elijah in 2 Kings chapter 2, that they went from Gilgal to uh, Bethel, to Jericho, to Jordan. These are different milestones. So each one of those are milestones. From March milestones, begin to mark down your milestones. So notice that Gilgal is a place of the rolling away or the circumcision of the flesh. So it is part, it's the place, Gilgal is the place of faith where God begins to roll away the flesh or the things of the world. He begins to uh, uh, circumcise. Notice that they had to circumcise themselves once again a second time Joshua had to circumcise them. That means circumcision in the New Testament stands for like circumcision of the heart or the flesh. That God has to circumcise us and cut off the old things and, and get ready for the new wine. Right? To cut off and make a new wine skin that he could pour out the new wine in the month of March. Hallelujah. And it is also March, the month of marvels. March, marvels, miracles, and marching orders. God is giving marching orders, I prophesy, in March. It's also a March uh, of marvels. Notice that Exodus 34, 10, God gave a prophecy to Moses saying this. He said that I will give you a covenant, not just not just a marvel, but a covenant of marvels, miracles, signs and wonders, such as not been seen in any people or been done among any nations. And it will be a terrible thing that I will do with you, says the Lord. So God said it is March marvels that God's going to give you a covenant, not just one marvel, not what just one sign, not just one miracle, but a covenant of marvels, miracles, signs and wonders, which a covenant is an agreement. It's, 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 it's where God says, I'm going to always do marvels. 
I'm going to always do miracles in your ministry, in your life. Okay? So it's going to be when you're going to see, Lord said, in March, an increase of marvels, wonders, signs. Uh, God said, these signs are going to follow you because you believe. In my name will you cast out devils. In my name will you speak with new tongues. In my name you will pick up uh, serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. And in my name, the Lord says, you will lay hands on the sick in the month of March and they shall recover. You're going to see instant healing signs, wonders, and miracles in March, the Lord is saying. So step out on faith. Notice it's a milestone of faith because you can never get anywhere unless you walk by faith, not by sight. I prophesied this in the first word was that you have to, uh, without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, it's going to be impossible to please God for those who come to God must believe that what he is and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That means God, that word in the Greek and Hebrew means God pays wages to those who uh, to who believe him. So God is going to pay wages because you have to walk in faith. He says this, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. So it is by faith is the substance of things hoped for, meaning it's the tangible evidence of things not seen. Meaning by faith you can receive things before they even come to pass. By faith Abraham believed God and it was imputed for, to him for righteousness sake. Uh, you see that in Romans 4 and meaning and credited to him, meaning you can buy on credit like a Visa or a MasterCard with faith things. And God said, I'm preparing a house and a ministry and, and, and apostolic hubs for people that have been in preparation season that they're coming into greatness in the month of March when they're passing over. Okay, so this is the month of the crossover and the Passover, the Lord's saying. Okay, because notice that the Passover is starting on March 26 to April 4th. So God is preparing the body to cross over. And as we cross over into Canaan land, that will be the, the land of promise. And notice that the, the children of Israel spoiled the Egyptians. So there were certain spoils, uh, finances that are going to be released, the Lord is saying, in the month of March. Certain milestones. Um, it'll be the crossover, listen, of Joshua 3, 4, and 5, where the, the priests were commanded 12 milestones of each tribe to put them uh, in the places in the Jordan where the priests stepped. And every time the priests stepped there, that they put a new rock. That means there's a new milestone every time you cross over. And that God said every time you cross over something, that you put a milestone there for someone else to come through and step on. That's why God said to to put the, there, put them there for a memorial to your children. That means you have a testimony. God says you will have a testimony in the month of March that other people will be able to come and walk on those stones that you put in the Jordan, that the, the trials that you had to go through to cross over. So God said that he's building people's ministries up in the month of March as you uh, step on these milestones and you put these 12 stones in, in the crossing over the Jordan. And we'll get to that in a minute in Joshua 5. Also, Nathan the prophet prophesies over King David. I talked about milestones of greatness in the first one uh, where, where your gift will make room for you and he's going to bring you before great men and women in the month of March. That means that your gift that God has given you is going to make room. God's going to bring you into greatness. He's going to bring you before great men and women of God. Okay, and he's going to walk you into your destiny in the month of March. That's why you got to not miss the crossover. You got to cross over with the rest of the body of Christ. And so his promise of greatness was prophesied by Nathan the prophet. And you'll see that in 2 Samuel 7, 9 through 10. There were seven milestones. Notice this March milestones. Uh, and milestones are very prophetic. They're, they're, they're seasons or times that you come into that that mark a certain um, change in your life that, that you can that you can go back and look at and say that was a milestone. This is going to be one of those in March, the Lord said. So there are going to be seven milestones of greatness. And we are preparing for the Passover and the Resurrection Sunday season. So I want you to look at these seven milestones of greatness. And I was going to go through them last week. But the Lord is saying that this is what's going to be for the body of Christ in this month. I want you to look at 2 Samuel chapter 7, 9, and 10. There's going to be, look at this, there's going to be uh, uh, seven milestones of greatness coming 
to you in the month of March, I prophesy. So let's look at this for a minute. I'm going to get over here and look at it in this Bible. And then I'm going to mark down each one of these for you because I don't want to miss it. So we thank you, Father, for this word. We're praising you right now. I also want you to put your uh, thumb on um, Exodus chapter 12 and Exodus 14. And because we're going to go into Exodus 12 and 14, and we're going to talk about uh, the Passover. But I'm first going to get over the crossover, and then we're going to go to, because the crossover of Jordan is a part of the Passover uh, that they actually passed over, hallelujah, the Red Sea. And we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So let's look at this. Second Samuel chapter seven, uh, and nine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Second Samuel chapter seven. Notice that I talked about different milestones of Baal, Perizim, which was where God broke through in the first one. El Ebenezer, where is the stone of help. Notice that the stone of help was Jesus Christ, a theophanic appearing of Jesus, who is the rock of ages in the old covenant. You see, when he showed up as Ebenezer, and it said the stone of help, meaning that was a milestone because Jesus helped them there, and they were able to defeat their enemies. Notice they came to Baal, Perizim. You'll see that in 2 Samuel 6 and also 2 Samuel 5, uh, 20. You'll see that uh, God broke through for them. So I also prophesied that it's a month of breakthrough. God is breaking through for you. You don't necessarily have to fight in this battle. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord in the month of March. The Lord is same. So uh, uh, when I was prophesying that there uh, last on the first one, here's the second one. You look at 2 Samuel 7. We're going to continue through this uh, verse 9 and 10. Uh, notice this, that God said this in verse 8, Now therefore so shall thou say unto the servant David. So God sends the prophet Nathan to prophesy over King David his milestones of greatness. And I want to prophesy God is sending some people, some pr a prophet in this season that's going to prophesy over people uh, certain milestones of greatness. So God's sending prophets uh, uh, to prophesy over people. Uh, people. So get ready in March. God said that God is going to send you a prophet just like he sent the prophet Nathan to prophesy some things to you that will give you uh, uh, comfort and confirmation. So it said, he says this, thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee, this is what Nathan said to David, he prophesied, I took thee from the sheep cope, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over my people, over Israel. So God is taking a lot of people. Notice David was uh, anointed by Samuel in First uh, Samuel chapter 16, but it was something like 12 to 14 years before he actually became king. Come on, somebody. So many people have been anointed, but you have not yet walked in your calling. You haven't totally walked into the office. You've been anointed as a prophet. You knew you were a prophet, but you haven't yet walked in the office of the prophet. You knew you were a, a bishop or an apostle. You were anointed, but you didn't yet walk into that office. But God said in March, many people are going to walk from the sheep coat, meaning they were, he was fall, he was one of the sheep to be in one of the leaders, meaning the shepherd is a pastor or a prophet or a leader. A shepherd is not a sheep because a shepherd, Jesus is the only good shepherd, but a shepherd is a pastor, one who leads sheep. Okay, notice that you'll see that in John 10, he said, my sheep hear my voice uh, and, and he openeth, the porter openeth the gate. You'll see that John 10, 3, and uh, that caused the sheep to hear my voice and he leadeth them out. Who is the porter? The porter is a prophet or an apostle because unless, or, or a pastor, unless God has one of his shepherds open the porter, or the gate, the porter is the shepherd opening the gate, then you cannot hear God's voice so that Jesus is the good shepherd that leads you out. Meaning Jesus is the only good shepherd, but God has appointed shepherds, pastors, leaders, prophets, evangelists, pastors to lead the sheep out. Now listen, but to also open the gate, you'll see that so that the sheep can hear God's voice, right? So you'll see that in John 10, 3. So here's what Nathan is prophesying over King David is that God said, I have taken you from the sheep coat, meaning he was one that was out taking care of, of his father Jesse's sheep, right? From following the sheep, notice he was following the sheep, he wasn't leading them. So God's going to take people from following the being a follower to a leader. I prophesy in March, he was following the sheep uh, to be a ruler over my people. So God's going to change you from following the sheep in March 
some people, this isn't for everybody, and making you a ruler. Notice this, and there's going to be seven blessings of greatness. I'm prophesying here. Uh, 2 Samuel 7, 9. Number one, God is with you wherever you go. So notice this, uh, what, God, what Nathan prophesies. I was with you whithersoever you went and have cut off thine enemies out of thy sight. So that's the first thing. God's going to be with you wherever you go and march. He's going to cut your enemies off uh, from your sight, verse two or number two is he's gonna. Ha he said, and I have made thee a great name. Number two, God is gonna make you a great name. I prophesy in March. He said this. I'm gonna make. I made you a great name. Number three, like unto the great men that are in the earth. So great men and women. This is where God set up that your gift is gonna make room for you in March, and He's gonna bring you before great men. Now notice there's. That's three of the seven. Now notice num, uh, verse 10, 2 Samuel 7, 10. Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and I will plant them. God says in the month of March, I'm going to appoint a place for each person on here and I'm going to plant people in March. Uh, Isaiah talked about in Isaiah 61 that we are called trees of, of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. So many people have been wandering around in the wilderness. They've been like a vagabond spirit. Uh, but God said that there's not going to be any more a vagabond. I'm going to plant you somewhere, says the Lord, in March. Notice this. He says, you're not going to wander anymore. This is one of the seven blessings or milestones of greatness in March that they will dwell in a place of their own. So many of you have not had a place of your own. The Lord is saying you've had to live with somebody. You're living with your parents. You're living with a brother or a sister. But God said in March, I prophesy, God has given your own house. I prophesy God is going to give you your own house, your own condominium. He's going to give you your, your own ministry, your own business. You've had to, you know, uh, uh, be in, in another church that you really weren't being able to be trained in the prophetic. But God is going to give you a, an apostolic hub, a place of your own and a place to live. Even a miracle ministry out of your own house. I prophesy in March that he's going to give you a place of your own and you will move no more. Notice that's number Hallelujah. Number six is that you will move no more. Hallelujah. That's the seven blessings of uh, milestones of greatness. Notice this. Number seven, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them any more as before. So the seventh milestone is the, that the children of wickedness in March are not going to afflict you as they did before because God's going to put a shield around you. I prophesy. And he's also crossing you over. I prophesy. So those are seven uh, milestones that you're going to come to in March, says the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now I want, let's go to Joshua chapter 3, 4, and 5, and we're going to see, we're going to talk about the milestone of crossing over uh, in the month of March. And we're going to see where we see this, hallelujah, we're going to see this uh, with Joshua and the children of Israel. And you're going to find a lot of prophetic milestones and types and shadows in here to understand what God is doing. Uh, doing for the body of Christ in the month of March. Hallelujah. So we thank you, Father, for that right now. And so let's get over here, March 2021. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's look at it here. Let's go look at Joshua 3, chapter 4. Um, this is where God commands Joshua 3, 1, rose up early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan and he and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. So notice I told you it's a preparation. The Feast of Purim is a preparation for Passover, meaning God has prepared us, the body of Christ, for March 27th, where the Feast of Passover, and then April 4th, the resurrection, right? So God is saying, look at this prophetic type and shadow, Joshua 3, 4, and 5. Uh, follow it in your Bible. And I put some of the scriptures up. You can study this. Uh, he said they lodged there before they passed over and they came to pass in three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God and the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. So notice that I, I was prophesying this yesterday, but it got deleted that notice that 
uh, first of all, the, the Ark of the Covenant went, which is the condensed presence of God, right? That is the presence of God in the Old Covenant that they carried uh, the Ark of the Covenant. The priests couldn't even touch the Ark. They had to uh, have poles where they carried it on their shoulders, right? Uh, and notice there was a breach that happened to Para Uzzah, meaning when Uzzah touched the Ark of the Covenant, he died, right? So that was a, a we talked about that milestone even of, of trial where, uh, you know, you go through trials and situations before you go through change and transformation or a milestone. So notice even David uh, 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 said he, he, you know, the Lord was displeased with him and he was displeased with the Lord because he killed Uzzah. That word there, that milestone was para Uzzah. We talked about it in the first uh, March prophetic word. So para Uzzah means there's a breach between you and God, but God's going to destroy these breaches. I prophesy in the month of March. Notice that finally, uh, the Ark of the Covenant was getting ready to be to cross over, meaning the, the presence of God goes before you. And then notice the priests went afterward. Who are the new covenant priests? The apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, bishops. We go before the body of Christ, but first we allow the presence of God to go. This is Joshua 3.3, 3, uh, 3, 4. And then he says this, he says this, uh, yet there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it that you may know the way by which you must go. Listen to this. For you have not passed this way here before. That means God is saying you're going to go to a new place uh, that you have not passed this way before. This is why God said in, in March, you got to let God's presence go before you and you got to let the leaders, you got to follow some of the leaders, the pastors, prophets, evangelists, teachers, apostles, follow the leaders uh, because God's going to have the new covenant priests go after the, 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 the ark and then we're going to go over the Jordan and we're going to cross over a milestone of crossing over into the Passover season where we'll come into Resurrection Sunday and many resurrections will happen and I prophesy, uh, 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 many people that are going to rise from the dead, even seriously, uh, serious, real resurrections from the dead, will also see resurrections of spiritual life from bondage to Egypt or the world. Many co souls coming into the kingdom. Uh, uh, charity. Notice that love covers a multitude of sin. Uh, God's kind of love, agape love. So God said when we love one another in the month of March, that it's going to cover a multitude of sin and God's going to do some great marvels and wonders as we learn to uh, have fervent charity one among another and love one another, the Lord said in March. Because notice that they had to work together in order to cross over. So God is saying that we have to work together in the body of Christ in order to get over uh, we can't just have our own ministry. We're all one body in Christ. So we're not, it's not about your ministry and my ministry and somebody else's ministry. Somebody else's church is about one body in Christ. We're all many members, but one body, Jew, gen Gentile, bond, free, male, female. We're all becoming in one new man. And so we see that in Ephesians 2, God said that also one new man is coming uh, in the month of March, that God's breaking down that wall, middle wall of separation, which is what? Racism and division. Come on. It's a, it's, it's really, all racism in is, is discrimination, meaning there's a division. There's a wall, meaning that there's something called, and I do this in deliverance, and I do, deal with this in all races of people. So a lot of people say, well, only whites are uh, prejudiced. No, all races. I've seen African Americans and blacks that are very very prejudiced. I've also seen Latinos that are very prejudiced because listen, this is why uh, it's called ethnic pride. Okay. So when I do deliverance, when you do deliverance on somebody, you almost everybody, including Caucasians, especially uh, need to repent of ethnic pride, but all of us have ethnic pride. We think our race is better. And so that's what causes discrimination. That's what causes racism. We all need to repent of ethnic pride. Okay. So we all have it. Uh, White supremacy is just ethnic pride. You know, whites think that they, they, they own the world or something. But see, I've served in the black church all my life, and I'm more black than I am white. Okay, so I would rather be African American than Caucasian. So I don't have that ethnic pride because God, God used me to bridge that gap. 
I have preached in the black church all my life. I've never served in the white church, you know, so much in a church church setting. But as the body of Christ, so God has taught me that it's ethnic pride. That is the middle wall of perdition that the Lord said is going to be broken down. I prophesy in the month of March. God's bringing us into one new man, one new body. You'll see that in Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, and you also see it in Ephesians 4 where uh, Paul says it is uh, one one body, one spirit, even as we are called in the hope of one calling, one faith, one baptism, right? One spirit, one faith, one baptism. So when we understand that it's all one spirit, uh, with that we're called into drink of one spirit it talks about we're all called to drink of the one spirit then we'll understand that that without our brother or sister whether uh, whoever they are then we can't get to the promised land we can't cross over so god said it's going to take the whole body of christ the leaders to go first the condensed presence of god first then the leaders the priests and the levites notice the levites uh, you know, like the singers and the, and the praisers. Notice Jehoshaphat sent out the praisers first. You'll see that in Second Chronicles twenty twenty that Jehoshaphat sent the praisers out because when you send the praisers out, it breaks through, right? Because it's the God of Baal per Perazam, which is one of the milestones I prophesied was God was going to break through. You'll see that in Second Samuel five uh, that God called uh, David called it Baal Perazam because God broke through the host of the Philistines. And he said there's going to be a sound of the going, uh, 2 Samuel 5, 24, in the tops of the mulberry trees. And when you hear that sound, bestir yourself because God is going to go before you and smite your enemies. And then God went through and as he heard that sound of the going, so it's not the sound of the coming in March, God said it's going to be the sound of the going that God's going to command the body to go, cross over in the month of March. Hallelujah. And notice this, verse 3. Uh, Joshua 3, 5, excuse me. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So God said, here's where your march marvels are. Your march, that word wonders is the same word we use for you are the God of wonders. Psalm 77, 14, you are the God that doeth wonders or miracles or marvels. So God said, you have to be at a level of sanctification. Notice he said, sanctify yourself or consecrate yourself. And then tomorrow we'll cross over and you will see great wonders. So there's a certain level of sanctification and holiness you have to walk in uh, to see God's miracles. These signs will follow you what? Because you believe. Notice there's a certain level of faith you have to have. That's one of the milestones of faith. Transformation uh, in the month of, of March. You have to have faith to see miracles and signs and wonders. And so God said it is going to be a milestone of faith in the month of March and transformation and crossing over for you. You're going to mark these milestones down just like jo uh, uh, God commanded Joshua and, and to take 12 stones each priest from each tribe and put them as mile markers come on milestones in the Jordan as they crossed over and we'll get to that here in a minute so notice he tells them all this that the Lord and also this is where God tells Joshua Joshua 3 uh, chapter uh, verse 7 and the Lord said unto Joshua this will I, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I am with you. So the Lord is saying there is many people on here, uh, leaders that you kind of had to walk up in the shadow of like your pastor or your prophet or your apostles, that you were like a Joshua. You were like having to, you know, kind of walk in someone else's shadow. But God said, just like I did with Joshua, that I'm going to begin to magnify your ministry and who you are, I prophesy, in the month of March, that they're going to see, the people are going to see that God said, I'm going to magnify you as I did with Moses, meaning the leader that you kind of tried to walk in their shadow, but, but nobody really, you know, really noticed you because they were so busy noticing this other leader. The Lord said, there are many leaders on here. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit, that the Lord said that I'm going to begin to magnify magnify you and your ministry in March and in, in the sight of all the people. So get ready. Uh, notice that he told him this in Joshua 3 verse 7 and notice that you'll see in Joshua 4 verse 14 he said, on that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel 
and they feared him as they had feared Moses all the days of their life. So notice God kept his promise. And I declare that God is going to keep his promise in the month of March. These are promises from God. And God is going to keep his promises. God doesn't give you a prophecy and then not fulfill it. So God has given you many prophecies. I told you just as, as Nathan was sent prophet Nathan was sent to, to King David, because uh, notice that Samuel had years before anointed uh, David to be king, but he didn't walk in his, to be king till about uh, 14 years later. So God is saying, then he what? He sent another prophet, Nathan, to actually say, today God has chosen you to be king. And it said that David perceived that God had called him to be a king. So notice well, of course he called him to be a king. He anointed him in front of his brothers, uh, uh, his his father Jesse and his brothers in First uh, uh, Samuel 16 years ago. But he didn't really walk in his fullness of his ministry. But I prophesy many are going to be called into their ministry actually walking in the office in March. And God is going to magnify you like Joshua. He magnified him in, in, in the front of the children of Israel like he did they did Moses. And they began to trust Joshua like they did Moses. And Joshua led him over. He, he crossed them over. Notice this is what this is, the crossover. Now I want you to look at this here. And we're going to see where Gilgal is and understand what the place of Gilgal is, which is going to be another one of the, 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 the milestones in the month of March. Uh, and look at this. Uh, let's look at this. Joshua 4, verse 9. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where, listen, the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant had stood. Uh, and they are there till it, even to this day. So notice when God commanded the, the priests of each tribe to put a mile, uh, a, a stone in, in, in the Jordan where they crossed over to mark it as a memorial. So when their children asked them, uh, they said that they would, they would say that this is what these stones were for. So God is saying, many people, these milestones in March are going to be telling your children about someday. That God said it's going to be such a significant month uh, in March 2021, mark it down because the Lord said even your children are going to ask about uh, these milestones that you uh, that you marked out in this month. The Lord is saying, and notice it was there until this day. That means it lasted forever. These things last forever. These milestones will never change. This is something that's going to be solid in your life. God is saying that many people have had so much up and down uh, and depression and trial in their life that they've had nothing they can hold on to but Jesus. And sometimes that's the way Jesus wants it. But God said, I'm also going to give you some other things to hold on to, some milestones to hold on to in March that you're going to hold on uh, and, and God said, I'm going to give you things that are going to remind you of my goodness to you, my goodness. I'm going to pass by you like I did my uh, Moses and put you in the cleft of the rock and my glory is going to pass by. You're going to see my goodness. Just like Exodus 33, uh, Moses saw God's goodness because God is a good God and he's going to bless his people. I prophesy in March, get ready. These milestones of coming, these 12 milestones, mark them down. 12 is an apostolic prophetic number of 12 is a government number that 12 milestones were put in the Jordan River that stood for each step they took. There was a new uh, uh, opening of a milestone. Something new came. And each step they got closer to crossing over into their promised land, into Canaan land, the land flown with milk and honey. That's the land of your prosperity and your promise. And God said you're walking over the Jordan, over the trials and tribulations of walking into your promised land. I prophesy in March and the whole body of Christ is going over. The Lord has given me this word. Uh, Joshua 4.14, uh, there you see uh, God magnified Joshua. And then Joshua 4.18, and the people came up out of Jordan on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gilgal in the east uh, border of Jericho. Now notice Gilgal is the place of the rolling away. Okay, this is where God begins to roll things away, and I'll talk to that about that in Joshua 5 in a minute. Okay, so there there you'll see that same thing in 2 Kings chapter 2, where uh, Elijah followed Elisha from Gilgal. Notice that Gilgal is a place of faith. 
And it's also the place where God rolls away the flesh. Uh, and you start to walk in the spirit. And then you'll see you go from there to Bethel, which is the house of God. You meet God, El El Bethel, the God of the house of, of Bethel. Because you notice when Jacob, Jacob came in Genesis 28 to Bethel and he laid down on the rock and he saw, he dreamed and saw the heavens open and the ladder come down and the angels of God descending, ascending and descending and God looking over. Notice that he said, uh, God was in this place, but yet I didn't even know it, right? So he didn't even know it. He said, this is none other than the house of God, but he really had not met God yet until Genesis 35. He said, this is, he called the place in Genesis uh, 35, which is another milestone, El El Bethel, means the God of the God, the God of the house of God. So he, he met the God of the house of God. So many people go into a church, they go uh, and they go to church every Sunday, but they have not met the God of the house or the church. So God said, you haven't met yet Jesus in your life. You really just go to church. You have a religious spirit. You're just going to a building. But God said, you're going to meet El El Bethel, which is one of the prophetic words in the first part. El El Bethel is the God of the house of God. And Bethel is where you meet God. And then you go to Jericho. Notice Jericho is a place of warfare. So Jericho is the next milestone. Notice that after your flesh gets rolled away, Gilgal, you go and you meet God at Bethel. And then you come to Jericho. Jericho is a place of spiritual warfare. So it isn't always that you get blessed right after you meet God. Sometimes you go through some warfare. Notice that after Joshua and the children of Israel crossed over, what was the first battle was Jericho. But there were certain prophetic instructions God gave Joshua, the leader. That's why you have to have a leader, a commander, right? That's why you have to have a Joshua and a Moses. And I prophesy in the month of March, Joshua's and Moses are arising and Esther's, come on, and Deb, uh, Devorah's to lead the body of Christ. Prophetess Devorah's, judges, you know, she was a judge and a prophetess. Uh, and Esther, it is a month of Purim and the Feast of Purim. And we see that in the book of Esther, uh, the Feast of Purim in this month was actually the feast where Haman, which stood for the flesh or Satan or the archetype of the Antichrist, Christ was trying to take over Esther, which stands for the human spirit, and Mordecai, which stands for the Holy Spirit. And notice that Haman, come on, got hung on his own gallows that he set up for Esther. That means uh, that he set up for Mordecai, which Mordecai is the Holy Spirit. So it's the flesh trying to hang the, the Holy Spirit uh, where the Holy Spirit is trying to overtake your life, but the flesh is trying to become Haman, which is the flesh trying, or Satan, a type of Satan that is trying to hang on the gallows, the Holy Spirit, because he knows if you become one with the Holy Spirit that he, there'll be nothing he can do to stop you. You see that in 1 Corinthians six seventeen that he or she that is joined to the Lord has become one spirit with the Lord, right? So, so, so you'll see in the month of Purim in the book of Esther that the, that Mordecai represents the Holy Spirit, Haman uh, represents the flesh, King Ahasuerus uh, represents the human soul, and Esther uh, represents the human spirit. And if you look at it like that, you'll understand the war between the flesh and the spirit. That Paul talks about the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary to one another, and, and that you cannot do the things that you can. But notice in the month of Purim was when they had uh, the feast of Purim, and notice that it was Haman who tried to hang Mordecai and kill the Jews who got hung on his own gallows. So I prophesy that Haman in the month of March will get hung on the gallows that he set up for you. That that Haman. The, the gallows he set up for Mordecai and Esther, are, he's going to be hung on his own gallows, the Lord is saying, because it's the month of Purim. And so continue here. They're at Gilgal. Uh, we'll see that Joshua 4, 19 and 20. And he said, And those 12 stones which they took of the Jordan, Joshua did pitch at Gilgal, verse 21. And he spake unto the children of Israel, uh, listen to this, saying, When your children shall ask, their fathers in a time to come saying, what mean these milestones? So notice that's why you mark these milestones down in March because your children are going to ask about them in generations to come. I prophesy it's going to be such a month 
March 2021 of milestones of change and victory and transformation and breakthrough and faith uh, and crossing over and Passover that you're going to have 12 milestones of greatness that God said that you will be able to tell your children about. It'll be for a memorial. Notice that he said you'll tell their children, listen to this, uh, then you shall let your children know saying, Israel came over the Jordan on dry ground, 23, for the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were, listen to this, passed over, mark that word down, passed over, because it is the season of Passover, this is a milestone of Passover, mark it down, or crossing over, right, as the Lord your God did for you in the Red Sea. So notice the first, um, the first Passover was the Red Sea, Exodus uh, 14 and Exodus 12. We'll look at that in a minute. Though that was the first memorial, the Passover, and that is when God told him to start to keep the Passover. So notice that Passover is representative of you coming out of Egypt or bondage and going into your promised land. And so notice that there were there was a second Passover. We're going to look at that in Exodus 12. So turn your Bible to Exodus 12 and we'll get there after I'm done with this. So you can see this, Exodus 12 and 14. Okay, so let's continue here. So he says in 23, uh, that before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did uh, to the Red Sea, which he dried up from, from before us until we were gone over. Verse 24, that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord that is mighty and that you might fear the Lord your God forever. So this is where God's going to do the wonders. He said, remember, sanctify yourself. I'm going to do miracles, march, marvels, and miracles. I'm going to do wonders. Uh, and so that they will know that God is mighty. Not just because God's mighty in your life, but God is mighty, period. It's going to glorify God, I prophesy. These milestones that God is going to take you through and the body of Christ through will give glory to God and will magnify God so that other people will come to him. And other generations, notice when you tell your children that they tell their friends and many, many teenagers and youth will come to the, come to Christ, I prophesy, in March through your testimony. So begin to testify about what God's doing. Now look at this in Joshua 5. Here's where it's really important to see this and it's very prophetic for March. Joshua 5 verse uh, 7 through uh, 12. Let's look at it. And he said, and their children whom you raised in their stead. Okay, notice Joshua circumcises them a second time. Joshua 5, 2. And at that time, the Lord said unto Joshua, make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel a second time. So when you see circumcision in the old covenant, it's a type and shadow of the cutting away of the flesh or the cutting away of Egypt or the cutting away of the world. So this is what he's saying. I had to circumcise you or cut in a way, a second time before I could actually take you into the promised land. Because you came out of the Red Sea, out of bondage. Notice they had to wander in the wilderness in the wilderness 40 years before they came to Jordan and then crossed over to the promised land, to the place where God's going to bless you, right? That you're going to lay a, land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So notice they had to do it a second time, meaning circumcision is out of the flesh and that of the heart. Meaning God said that there's going to be the circumcision of the heart also in March where you got to circumcise your flesh and your heart and begin to walk in the spirit. And not in the lust of the flesh, right? Not fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And Joshua made them sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the heel of the foreskins. And this caused why Joshua did circumcise all the people. Now go to verse 6. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. There it is. Uh, uh, Till all the people that were men of war which came out of Egypt. Because, see, God didn't want the, the contamination of Egypt to go into the promised land with them. So he had to circumcise them and he cut off certain blood, men that had blood on their hands. That's why King David had blood on his hands and he could not build a temple, but Solomon had to. So God's got to cut off certain things and march before he can take you into your promised land. Many of you have been wondering, why is it taking so long, God? You know what I mean? I've been waiting for 30 years to go into my promised land. You're going to give me a business and a house and a ministry and, and, and a nice car and, and, a, and, you know, and children and marriage. But where is it, God? But God said, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. 
Get ready, says the Lord, because you're going to go over. But God had to cut off some things first. He had to cut Egypt out of you. He had to cut a lot of things as you wandered around that desert for 40 years. You had to learn some things before. Because if you would have not got that cut off, you would have went over there and you would have lost it. That's what the Lord said. You would have went over there and then you would have lost it. And then he would have had to take you back. In through the trial. or But the Lord said, I had to take you through the trials that when you got to the promised land, you wouldn't lose it. You wouldn't, it, you know, you wouldn't uh, lose it. You would have the right discernment to make the right wisdom choices in your life that you wouldn't go back into bondage every time that the devil tempted you. And that's also going to be a part of this word at the end that, that the devil's going to come. Uh, the enemy's going to be coming in like a flood, but I got a few things that the Lord has given me for warning at the end of this, okay? Um, and so those, they walked around the desert in Egypt. They were consumed because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord unto whom the Lord swore that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto his father, unto their fathers, that he would give unto us the land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 7, Joshua 5, 7. And their children whom you raised up in their stead. Notice it wasn't even then that went in, it was their children. So I prophesied, we're not going to wait another generation. It's, it's going to be us that's going over. I prophesy, not our children. Our children are going with us, but I'm not. I'm saying God isn't going to have to wait a whole other generation to bless us, to get us over uh, into the promised land. In this generation, we're walking into revival and reformation and greatness, I prophesy. It's not going to be that the remnant's going to be the children. It's going to be the remnant. It's going to be us and our children. Hallelujah. Multi-generational blessings, I prophesy. And so the Lord says, uh, I swear unto your fathers that he would give up a land that flowed with milk and honey, and their children whom he raised up in their stead, uh, with them Joshua circumcised, for they were uncircumcised because they had not circumcised them by the way. That's why your children need to be uh, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You got to be circumcised, meaning that circumcision is to cut off the, 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 the defilement, the abomination, uh, the uncleanliness. Remember God said in 2 Corinthians 6, 17, come out from among them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing and then I will receive you. So you got to come out from among them, be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing and then God said he will receive you. That was circumcision is, right? Verse, nine, uh, verse 8, Joshua uh, 5, 8, and it came to pass when they had done circumcising all the people that they abode in their place in the camp till they were whole. So there is a place of healing. Come on. How many know when God cuts you with the word of God, because it's sharper than any two-edged sword, Hebrews 4, 12, piercing to the dividing center of soul and spirits and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So when God cuts you, it takes the time to heal sometimes. He said that they had to stay in their place in the camp until they were made whole again. So sometimes God wants to heal you and make you whole and, and bandage you up before he takes you into your promised land. That may be what you're in a season of healing right now. That God, that when you get over there, you won't lose it. Come on, somebody. I know you know people are hearing this prophetically. I know you are because it's speaking to me by the Holy Spirit. Now, verse 9, he says, this, and the Lord said unto Joshua, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you, wherefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. That's Gilgal. That's your milestone, Gilgal, which is the place, what, of the rolling away. So notice this, uh, these milestones are all talking about stones. And we talked about Jesus is the milestone. Jesus is the rock of ages. Huh, come on now. He is the rock where the waters of Mara came out of. He is the rock uh, of the living water coming out, right? So you see that it's talking about milestones. Milestones are milestones that you had a relationship with Christ. That means Jesus is going to restore his, your relationship with him before you go over so that you don't go over there and try to do it yourself and mess it up again. So this is why he's saying you had to stay in the, in the camp till you were made whole after he cut you with the word of God, right? And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt or bondage, right, off of you, and you called it Gilgal. Verse 10, and the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover. Notice the Passover, right? The milestone of Passover coming were preparation for Passover. Every time you see Passover, because notice it's a memorial. It's, and Passover is just a memorial of when they when God brought them out of the Red Sea, which is a milestone. Okay, so this is why March milestones are so 
prophetic. You got to catch this. Uh, and this is a great revelation. Uh, uh, I know the Lord has given me this. Uh, kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening uh, in the plains of Jericho. So notice, even though they're going to cross over, the, the next battle is going to be Jericho, one of their biggest battles. But notice they already have, that's why you always see Jericho as a place of warfare after you come over a milestone of victory. But notice that God gave them specific instructions March around the walls seven times for seven days and then shout and the walls will come down. That was very easy to conquer Jericho because of what they went through at Gilgal. So if you go through the right process, that the warfare will become a lot easier because you, you know that the Lord is going to go out before you, Bel Perazim, the milestone of Bel Perazim, 2 Samuel 5, and uh, he's going to sound of the going, he's going to, in the tops of the mulberry trees, he's going out before you, right? And he's going to fight the battle for you, so you just listen to what he tells you to do. That's why you had to go through all this cutting away. Uh, of the flesh and, and circumcision. And 11, now mark it down. It's very prophetic. Uh, Joshua 5, 11, and 12. Mark this down. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Look at that. Uh, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. Now look at this, Joshua 5, 12. Mark this down. It's going to be very prophetic. And he said, the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. So notice that God, God's provision was manna. He fed them with manna every day, the same food every day, just like he's fed Elijah by the brook Cherith with the ravens came and brought him flesh and he drank of the brook. But notice when the brook dried up that God said, arise and go to Zarephath because I have provided a widow there that has going to provide for you. Okay, so every time you see that the manna ceased, it's like the brook dries up and it's time to go okay so it's not going to be the same provision it's going to be a greater notice that they spoiled the egyptians the uh children of israel when they went out god had them uh uh get favor with the egyptians and they spoiled them they took all their gold and silver and their raiment and notice that they didn't even know why they gave it to them but they said that they walked out with great substance and they spoiled the Egyptians. So this is a month God said you're going to spoil the enemy. Your enemy, the wealth of the sinner is going to be laid up for the just. Because you're not going to go over there broke, I prophesy. You're not going over there broke. It's Canaan land, the land of prosperity, the land of milk and uh, the land that flows with milk and honey. Your house is coming. Your business is coming. Your ministry is coming. Uh, the car that you wanted is coming. The husband you, you've been praying about and or the wife you've been praying about is coming, I prophesy. Uh, get over this, uh, Jordan is crossing over this milestone in your life and God said that the promises of God are yes and amen from this day forward I prophesy so notice the old manna ceased uh, neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. So there's going to be some things that are going to stop. Meaning you're going to say, okay, every time God gets ready to bless you, the enemy's going to attack you. And you're going to think, wait a minute, I thought God was getting ready to bless me, but all of a sudden I just lost something. Come on, sometimes God's got to roll something away or take something away to add something. So I noticed yesterday, right before I was going to bring this word, that I got attacked. Somebody started taking some money out of my account that was an unauthorized uh, transaction. I had to cancel my visa card. All this stuff started happening. Crazy stuff. Uh, and, and, and God told me it's because, because I'm breaking off certain, uh, 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 provision that you relied on so I can give you uh, all, I can supply all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. So God has to break some things off that, that you rely on, that you do for yourself so that he can provide for you. So I declare uh, that this, uh, uh, and also it's just an attack of the enemy, but he says this, mark it down, Joshua 5 verse 12, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. So notice he cut the manna off. They didn't have any manna, but you did eat of the fruit of Canaan in that year. So the Lord said, I'm cutting off some things and I'm adding some things on Mars. So I'm cutting off the, the things that you thought you needed or that you were relying on that wasn't me. And then I'm going to give you, look at this, they ate of the fruit of Canaan in that year. I prophesy you're going to eat 
the fruit of Canaan land, the land of promise in this year and this month after March. March is going to be your year, your month. 2021, God's cutting off some things, but adding other things. And you're crossing over, I prophesy. The man is going to cease. The provision that you think you need is going to cease. And God is going to bless you with new provision. That that he can prove that I'm going to be the one to supply all your needs according to my riches, glory, glory by Christ Jesus. You don't have to try. Now, yeah, God will have us do certain things. Uh, faith without works is dead. Being alone, He's got. we got to be diligent with our finances and those kind of things like that but there are certain things that we've been doing that we we think we need to do to make the money okay but God said I'm cutting off everything rolling away everything that you think you need so that I can put the new wine in the new wine skin come on we got to get rid of the old wine skin you cannot put new wine into old wine skin or it'll burst right it'll burst uh, and so look at this now I also want to tell you uh, what the Lord showed me this and, and towards the end of yesterday I told you this that the enemy started to come in like a flood Isaiah 59 19 uh, it says when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him so the Lord said that the enemy has been coming to many people like a flood but God said he's going to raise up a standard against your enemy in the month of March I prophesy and let's look at this uh, he gave me a revelation in, in the book of Revelation so let's look at it uh, yesterday let's look at Revelation chapter 12 uh, and look at it for a minute, and we're going to see something here prophetically about this flood that the enemy is setting out. Now, notice that Satan has come down uh, having great wrath because he knows, but he has a, a short time, Revelation 12, 12. Uh, therefore, listen to this. Uh, he came to make war against the woman, Revelation 12 and verse 6. Now, I told you the woman could stand for the church and the man child could stand for Jesus who was caught up. Uh, Mary, you know, had hit the child and, and Jesus was caught up and he was a ruler of the nations. But the man child, uh, the woman could also stand uh, for Israel or the woman can also stand for women. Because women uh, are birthing the man-child. And notice that's a, a prophecy of Genesis chapter 3, 15. That, uh, that he shall bruise his head, but he'll bruise his heel. So Jesus, uh, through the man-child, right? So it is Jesus who bruises the serpent's head. Uh, and then he bruises his heel. But it is also Jesus or Christ through the prophet or the apostle or the prophetess, right? That is bruising the head of Satan. So he's come to make war against the remnant of his seed. Meaning he's come to make war against you and your children. Why are you wondering why I'm having so many attack against my family and my children? Because God's got a call of greatness on your life. And the enemy's coming in like a flood. But the God said in March, I'm going to raise up a standard against him watch this watch this uh, revelation 12 5 and he brought forth a man child who was to rule the nations uh uh with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto god unto the throne and the woman fled into the wilderness notice this where she has a place prepared of god that 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 they should feed her there are a thousand two hundred and three score days now notice this, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels because this is a war going on. When you're crossing over like this, you're going to see a, a lot of warfare. But God said, I've sent my angels to fight against the dragon, to fight the serpent, to crush the serpent's head. Romans 16, 20 says that the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. So I prophesy in March, the God of peace is going to bruise Satan under your feet. Notice this, verse 7, And there was war in heaven, verse 8, And he prevailed not, neither was there place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, hallelujah, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Look at this. He deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying, In heaven now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, uh, which accused them before God day and night. 
and they overcame him. Look at this. By the blood of Jesus or the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That's how you overcome the enemy. By the blood of Jesus. You can't just use, there are certain weapons of, weapons of warfare, the full armor of God, the sword of the Spirit, but you also got to use the blood of Jesus, I prophesy. So weapons of warfare. Uh, you got to use the blood and the word of your testimony. This is how you overcome them because you love not your own life to the death, meaning you don't love your life. You give up your life to save your life. You, you deny yourself daily, pick up your cross, you follow Jesus, and you, you it's by the word of your testimony, meaning you testify what God did for me. He did it once, he'll do it again. So when you speak the word of testimony, it, it overcomes the enemy in your life. Okay, in verse 11, and they overcame him. Verse 12, uh, therefore rejoice you heavens and ye that dwell in him. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down having great wrath uh, because he knoweth that he has about a short time. Verse 13, mark it down, 13 to, uh, 13 to 17. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. So the woman is the church, meaning the church could be persecuted Israel, but the woman could be the, the daughters of Zion who bring forth the men child, right? Because the man child that men are being persecuted because they're God, they're all stuck in prison houses, Isaiah says. They're stuck in the, in the head of the streets. Uh, so a, a lot of men of God are in prisons or out in the street. And, and the women are going through a lot of warfare because they bring forth the man child, the daughters of Zion, right? They bring forth the men, and the war is against the, the remnant of the sea. Notice that you'll see that in Revelation 12 17. And a dragon was wroth with who? The woman. Notice that. He was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So notice verse 13. Now, I want you to see this, though, 14, 15, and 16. This is what God is saying, Isaiah 50, 59, 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. Watch this. 14. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Look at this that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and a times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. Now, this is a very uh, end time prophecy, but I'm not going to get into what this means prophetically. I'll do that in another one. Uh, this is very prophetic. But notice that prophetically God is saying this for the woman of the church or women of God, of daughters of Zion also. Uh, he's saying this to the woman were given uh, were given two wings of a great eagle that you might fly. So God is saying that the eagle stands for the prophet or the prophetess. So the wings of an eagle to fly uh, uh, from the face of the serpent in the month of March, I prophesy. Now watch this, verse uh, 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth, look at this, water as a flood. There's your enemy comes in like a flood. There's your flood right there. After the woman... Look at this, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Now notice this, verse 14, mark it down. And the earth, look at, help the woman. My God, thank you, Jesus. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So I prophesy when the, when, in March, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is going to raise up a standard against him. Notice that he cast the flood out of his mouth, and notice the earth opened up her mouth and swallowed the flood. That is the Spirit of the Lord. That is a prophetic type of the Spirit of the Lord. When the enemy comes in like a flood, Isaiah 59, 19, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. So I prophesy when the enemy comes in like a flood in March, when you're trying to cross over, when you're trying to get over there, that God is going to open up the earth and swallow that flood, and he's going to raise up a standard against the enemy in your life, I prophesy. And notice that we're going to come into Passover. Remember, Passover season is in Exodus 12. Notice, remember what God did for the children of Israel. What And notice this, by the blood of the Lamb, Revelation 12 and 11, it is going to be by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony that you overcome Satan, for you love not your own life to the death. So notice this very prophetic type of shadow of Passover, okay? The blood of the Lamb. And notice that Jesus comes in Revelation 19, 
as a lion of the tribe of Judah, as a man of war, to make war, right? He comes, his name is the word of God, right? He comes uh, in, in, in his, with the breastplate riding on a white horse. You'll see that also. You can see that in Revelation 19. Let's look at it for a minute because I want you to catch this, how Jesus is going to fight this war for you. Look at this, Revelation uh, 19. Hallelujah. Uh, and he was closed. Look at this. And I saw in heaven open, Revelation 19, 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. Look at this. And he that sat upon it was called faithful and true, and in righteousness does he judge and make war. Look at that. That's Jesus when he comes back to fight the enemy, Revelation 19, 12. And his eyes were a flame of fire. Look at that. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself, look at this, 13, and he was clothed uh, with a vesture dipped in blood. Notice it's dipped in blood. There's that blood of Jesus, and the name is called, his name is called the Word of God, Revelation 19, 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of the mouth goeth a sharp two-edged sword, and with it he should smite. Look at the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Look at this. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. So you're going to see here where Jesus comes as a man of war. There's a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Notice you'll see that in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. He says that the Antichrist will come, and that, that Jesus will come, and who he shall consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. So you see, when Jesus... Jesus comes back to destroy for Armageddon to destroy the Antichrist and his system and the false prophet and we'll see Armageddon. He comes back like this as the Almighty God. The, 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 the lamb slain. He's not only the lamb slain but now he's a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's not a spotless lamb, the Passover lamb. He's going to become as a lion. He's going to come roaring. He's going to be a man of war. You'll see that where it uh, says God uh, stirs up jealousy like a man of war. Isaiah 49 I believe it is. Uh, and he shouts, yea, roars, shouts aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. So I declare and decree and prophesy Jesus is coming out to fight against your enemies. He's, the, the, the sword of the Lord is coming out of his mouth. It's sharper than two, any two-edged sword. The word of God, his name is the word of God, piercing the dividing sword, uh, sunder soul and spirit, joints and marrows, and a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart, Hebrews 4.12. So you got to use the word of God, the sword of the Lord. Jesus is bringing out the sword to cut off your enemies, to break through. I prophesy in the month of March. Notice the Passover. Let's look at Exodus uh, 12, 21. So we remember the Passover because we're getting ready to go into Passover. Uh, Exodus 12, 21. Then Moses called for all the elders and the children of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Okay, this is Exodus 12, uh, 21, verse 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of the house until the morning. So notice we're talking about the weapon of warfare, the blood of Jesus. Notice the Passover is when they took uh, the the Passover lamb, once they killed the, the Passover lamb, they took the hyssop branch, they dipped it in the blood, and they struck the lintels and the doorposts. So when you put the blood of Jesus on your lintels and doorposts in the month of March, the death angel will pass over in March, I prophesy. So notice that uh, it's, a, it's a prophetic... Uh, a prophetic act or a gesture that you can do it over your house, over your room, over your entrances and your exits in the month of March that the death angel will pass over. So notice uh, Exodus 12, 23, for the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over, listen to this, the door and will not suffer the destroyer uh, that is the Abaddon or Apollyon spirit or Satan, the destroyer, right? Uh, uh, the death angel, the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. Verse 25, and it shall come to pass when you 
when you uh, be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he has promised that you shall keep this service. So notice when you go over into the Canaan land, keep this service of the Passover. Uh, not that we're, we're under grace now. We don't have to keep the feast of Passover, but it's a prophetic type. Come on. Now, uh, the blood. We put in the blood of Jesus. We're applying the blood in March on our lintels and doorposts. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say to you, what does it mean, this service? Here's where the milestone is. Notice that the same thing was with the 12 stones that he told Joshua to put in the Jordan each uh, for each tribe, for each priest, right? That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who pass over the houses of the children of Egypt, uh, of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and our people and they bowed down their heads and worshiped the Lord. So God's going to cause the Egyptians and the death angels and destroyer to pass over your houses, I prophesy, in this Passover season in March. Hallelujah. And, and as you apply the blood on your doorposts, and remember this, Exodus 12, 35 through 36, you're going to come out with great spoil, I prophesy. Mark it down, Exodus 12, 35 through 36. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. It was a prophecy. Notice this. And they borrowed, listen, they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. Verse 36. And the Lord gave the people favor. So I prophesy God has given you favor with people with great influence and wealth. The wealth of the sinners laid up for the just, but also God is saying this, that the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs 10, 22. So God's going to make you rich and he's going to give you favor uh, with people of great influence and wealth. I prophesy in March, look at this, Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they had uh, required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. So God said, you're going to spoil your enemies. You're going to come out with great substance. I'm not sending you into the land of Canaan with nothing. God said, I'm breaking out the lack of poverty, and I'm bringing you into prosperity, into your land flowing with milk and honey. I prophesy in the month of March. I mark this prophetic word because, God, it took me two of uh, these things to do. The one that I, I did yet last night got deleted. The enemy was fighting against this thing, okay? So now look at Exodus 14. Remember, this is the first uh, Passover when they passed over the Red Sea. And then the second was when Joshua, they had to go around the wilderness 40 years. And then finally, Joshua, a new commander, came and led the children, of, and Caleb also. So Caleb is an excellent spirit. Notice that God said that Caleb had a different spirit. So it's going to take a different spirit in leaders, a Caleb and a Joshua, an excellent spirit. Uh, Proverbs talks about an excellent spirit, that you're going to have to have a different spirit to be able to go over to this promised land. It's going to be a different uh, spirit that's going to take you over one that is reverent to God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, right? And, and knowledge of the Holy One as understanding. So, so the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You can't even have wisdom unless you fear God. Unless you reverence God, you can't even have wisdom because the fear or the reverence of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? And, and it says then, the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So you have to have knowledge of God's holiness, His separateness, who He is, right? He's a great God. He's not like you're talking to, you know, some person walking down the street. God is separate and holy. You can't come to God any old way. Um, and so begin to worship God in spirit and in truth in the month of March. Begin to come back in covenant relationship with Jesus. Uh, I don't care about anything else, but if there's a breach in my relationship with Christ, I need to get that fixed before anything. I can't stand to have a breach in my relationship with Christ. And if I, if I do, I always have to fast and pray, uh, get on my face, and because I don't care about all the blessings because the real blessing is having Jesus in your life, is having Christ in your life. That's the real blessing. But with that, God blesses you with material wealth and blessings and, and favor and, and, and relationships and businesses uh, and finances and ministry, right? He blesses you with friends,
uh, and counselors and the multitude of counselors are safety. God is sending you counselors, people that you can talk to uh, in the month of March. You've been alone a long time. Even like Abraham, it said God called Abraham alone, right? So a lot of people on here, God has called you alone, but now he's going to expand your network. I prophesy in March that there's other people coming to help you. The stone of help, Ebenezer, we talked about in the first March milestone, that Ebenezer, the stone of help, which is the stone of Christ, right? Uh, that he becomes a stumbling stone in, in the way of your enemies, but he is the chief cornerstone, right? And we are all lively stones built up a holy temple to bring sacrifices to praises unto God. Hallelujah. So we are all lively stones. We are written epistles of the apostle Paul talks about each one of us are a written epistle of Christ. Hallelujah. And we're a lively stone, but Jesus is that, is that milestone, that chief cornerstone. So come back to Christ in March and you'll get, he'll take you over. He'll be the rock of Ebenezer to help you get over the thing that you need to get over uh, in March. Because notice this, Exodus 14. Look at this. Uh, let's talk about this here. Let's look at, start at verse 19. And the angel of God went before the camp of Israel and removed and went... Look at this. Behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. So notice that that, that pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night, which was the, the, the Shekinah glory of God, was, was leading them. It was air conditioning in the daytime and because they were out in the desert. It was air conditioning in the daytime and fire heat by night, but it was also protection. Notice that that angel or that pillar also of glory would go before them and, and divide between their enemies. But notice in, 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 the, in, the, in the Passover, watch this, uh, Exodus, 19, uh, Exodus 14, 19, 20. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night uh, to these so that the, the one camp could not come near the other camp all night. So notice it made their camp dark the enemy's camp, but it lightened up the light of Israel's uh, camp. And this came in between uh, them and their enemies that they that God's presence comes in between you and your enemies that the enemies could not come near them. Look at that. And verse 21, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were all divided and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. Here's the original Passover. Hallelujah. And uh, the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and the left. So God said he's going to be a wall of fire all around you and be the glory in the midst of you. Zechariah 2 and 5, that there are going to be supernatural walls of protection around you. I prophesy in March. Look at this. And verse 23, and the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea. Even all of Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen, and it came to pass that in the morning watched that the Lord looked into the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire, hallelujah, and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Verse 25, and took off their chariot wheels, and they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord's Look at that. So they said God began to go and take the wheels off of their chariots and to, to fight for them. And even their enemies noticed that, that God was fighting for them. And the Lord said, look at this, unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea and the waters were come again upon the Egyptians and upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. Uh, verse 27, and Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. Then the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea, and the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Exodus 14, 29, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared 
the Lord and believe the Lord and his servant Moses. So God said, I'm going to fight for you in the month of March. But notice he also had Moses stretch forth his rod. So God goes before you to fight, but sometimes he calls us to stretch forth our rod, meaning this is a supernatural deliverance. That that Notice how supernatural this was, okay? Uh, and so the Lord said, the Passover, don't take this lightly. That's why it's March, the month of marvels and wonders and signs and miracles, because it's a very supernatural deliverance. It's not going to be something uh, that you've seen before. This is why he told Joshua that the priests have to go before you and the, and the ark has to go uh, and then the children of Israel go because you have not gone this way here before and so Lord's saying you haven't gone this way before but that's why you're going to see a supernatural deliverance I prophesy in the month of March coming through especially when we get around the 27th to the Resurrection Sunday, you're going to see that around the 4th of April. So I prophesy that right now in Jesus' name. That get ready for a supernatural deliverance, something you've never seen before. Get ready to cross over, milestones of crossing over in March. So get ready. The Lord said, prepare yourself uh, in the next few weeks because you're going over. God bless you. Thank you for coming on, everybody. Yolanda Lay, I see you. Prophetess Heather Grubbs, God bless you. Good to see everybody. Angela, God bless you. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Prophetess. I'm glad to see you on. I, I did, it's good to see you, uh, Yolanda. You've been in my spirit. I've been praying for you, Yolanda Leslie. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message you uh, pretty soon because I'm going to pray with you. Prophetess Dorsey Cox, God bless you. Uh, and also you too, Prophetess Heather. Glory Dave, thanks for being on. Uh, everybody that came on, I know that this is, this is the second part because of the one that I did yesterday got erased. Uh, deleted somehow, but the enemy, want, you know, was fighting me. But I believe God wanted me to do this over today. So uh, it's good to see everybody on there. Notice when I do these words, it's not that I don't uh, see you guys. I see you, but I want to get a, get the word out because it's a corporate prophetic word. God bless you, prophetess. See your Marty Davis. I see you also. Uh, I'm going on a trip uh, to uh, Eastern. Well, actually, over to Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon. I'm flying there in the next few days. So, But after I get back, I'm starting the School of Prophets uh, that'll be on Zoom. And I'm also going to be out almost every day. Uh, as you can see, this is my new office. I just moved into this house last month. Uh, and so, but I, so that I can do more ministry. But I have to take one more trip. And then I'm going to be out online almost every day. And I'm going to come out and do a school of prophets and uh, different things on Zoom probably. Um, and so I just want you guys to know that follow me over, especially in the discipleship group, uh, Birth into the Kingdom and the Spirit Disciples, that I'm going to be doing more in that group when I get back. I'm going for a week to Seattle, Spokane, and Portland, Oregon. I'll be flying out on Thursday uh, the 11th till the 18th and then I'll be flying back here and I'll be back here and then I'll start to put out some posts uh, that I'll be out more uh, especially doing prophesying more uh, praying for healing and miracles and doing uh, school of the prophets and the school of the supernatural uh, some of that might be on on zoom or uh, webcams or something like that uh, or some might you know be in the group but uh, but I'll let you guys know I'll put out posts and let everybody know what's going on. Hallelujah. So I love you guys. God bless you. Right now I seal this uh, prophetic word in the blood of Jesus. God, we apply the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, Revelation 12, 11, because we love not our own life unto the death. I thank you for every person on here, God. I pray right now that you strengthen them with might, with dunamis power in the inner man that Christ may dwell in their heart richly by faith, that they be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that they might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Because God said he wants you to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge. Ephesians 3, uh, you'll see that uh, 16 through 21. Because when you know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, you'll be filled with all the fullness of God. And God's desire is that you know the love of Christ like, like, like he loves you so much. He wants you to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. 
that then you might be filled with all the fullness of God, right? So it is about knowing Jesus, right? About knowing Jesus. And God said through this Passover season and this Resurrection Sunday, you're going to know me like never before. It's going to be like a prophetic type. When Jesus rises again from the dead on Resurrection Sunday this year, you're going to rise with him. Because Paul said that I may know him in the fellowship of suffering, that I might be made conformable to his death, Huh? And that if by any means I might attain to the resurrection from the dead so that you die with Christ, but it's also time to rise in new life with Christ. It says this in Romans 5.17, that if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. So God wants you to reign in life. He doesn't want you to be in black and poverty and warfare all the time and, and, and always having to fight your enemies. God said he wants you to reign in life that he, through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness that you will reign in life by one Jesus Christ and that you will know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, Ephesians 3, 16 through 20 and that you will comprehend with all the saints the breadth, the length, the depth, the height. That is the four dimensions of the super natural the four dimensions of the spirit to know that love so i prophesy in march you're going to know that love of christ which passes knowledge you're going to walk in the fullness of christ uh and the full measure of the spirit to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ and i seal it in the blood of jesus right now and i bless everyone right now with the arionic blessing may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom, supernatural peace that passes all understanding to guard your heart and mind by Christ Jesus the Lord. Bless you all. I love you in Jesus' name. I'll see you after I get back from this trip uh, to Washington and Oregon, Washington State and Oregon. Uh, and I'll see you all and I'll begin to put out posts. Also, I'm going to be start doing live streams uh, on YouTube also. And I'll be doing it more on the landscape way. So it'll be turned landscape. Uh, probably more uh, on YouTube and here. So, uh, but I sometimes like to do it portrait here when I'm doing a prophetic word. So God bless you guys. Some things will begin to change, but there's going to be a lot more services coming out in the next uh, couple weeks after I get back on the 18th uh, out of this ministry. So I love you guys. God bless you in Jesus name. Love you too, woman of God. Uh, Yolanda, I've been praying for you. You've been in my spirit. I don't know if Annie Bailey's on here, a prophetess Annie, but the Lord gave me a prophetic dream about you the other night, uh, about a radio station, uh, and I'm going to contact you. God gave me a dream that you were going to have a radio station, a, a gospel radio station. So I'm going to get a hold of you, Prophetess Annie Bailey. If you hear this, I'll get a hold of you. But God gave me a prophetic dream the other night, and it was very specific. And I even saw the radio station, and I saw a lot of souls getting saved through this radio uh, gospel radio station. And it wasn't that that you're just going to be on the gospel radio station. It's that you're going to own the gospel radio. It's a very clear prophetic dream. Prophetess Annie Bailey. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless everybody. We'll talk to you soon. In Jesus' name, love you.